County Engine 9. This is a day in the life of an engineer. They've got a new warehouse and they're going to be doing uh, alarm testing for their cert uh, certificate of occupancy. Oh, okay. So if you get that. Flow testing too or just alarm testing? Just smoke testing. Okay. So they're going to smoke the uh, offices up to see if the alarm's triggered. Oh, okay. So other than that, everything. You said 71? 7801. 7801. Okay. I wrote okay. it on the board. Okay. So uh, but other than that, yeah, everything's good. Okay. So Sounds good. Really made oh. pass on. So first thing I do when I come in in the morning is obviously check to make sure we're in our front line unit. Engine 9, this is our front line. Second thing is I'll check the run board here to see who's actually riding uh, in the officer's position and in the engineer's position. So we've got engineer Lynn who was riding on A shift yesterday. That gives me a little bit of an idea for how the engine might be set up. We've got three good engineers here at Station 9. Each one of us likes to run with the engine just a little bit differently based on our cruise preference and based on our own personal preference in terms of how we drive the engine. So that way if we were to catch a call a little bit early or we were to catch a call before I'd get a chance to really uh, get the engine set up my way, I know where tools are going to be, I know how things are going to be set up. going to make sure all the valves work. So this is one example right here. Uh, Kent likes to run with our gate valves open and that's that's awesome. It's perfectly fine. I just prefer to have them closed. So it's, again, it's just a little personal preference. So I'll set the bag up the way that I like it when I get water supply. So this is the cab of our fire engine. This is a Pierce Enforcer 2019. It's a big fire engine as far as engines go. We've got different types of apparatus with Cobb County. We've got engines, which are basically your frontline uh, fire, fire attack units. We've got ladder trucks. We've got several different types in the county. We've got heavy rescues. We've got hazmat vehicles. We've got uh, smaller quick response rescue vehicles. So this is basically our standard uh, standard firefighting engine. So every single station is going to have one numbered according to that station. Um, as far as station number nine, we are a single engine ALS house. So this is the only piece of equipment that we have here. Uh, and because it's ALS means that we're staffed with paramedics. So we've got two paramedics on the engine today. So if we respond to a medical call, we'll have, a, we'll have the appropriate uh, equipment to, to give, provide ALS care. So normally at this point in the shift, we would uh, be eating breakfast, and after breakfast we do some tabletop training. So generally how we handle it here is we'll have the junior firefighter give training to the senior firefighter. Something something uh, very specific to their job. So something like, what are the dimensions of the halligan? Different uses for various tools, um, that sort of thing. The senior firefighter will give some sort of training to the engineer. So it could be territory training, could be hydrant locations, could be pump rules, uh, something of that nature. And then I'll give some sort of training to the lieutenant, usually some sort of uh, fire size up or, or blue card training um, in terms of his, of his uh, command structure. 
Today is a little bit different though. So today we've got a nice cold rain coming down here in February. So we've shifted gears a little bit. We've got our friends from Station 27, which is our one of our neighboring stations down here to uh, do some CPR training. So CPR is something that we do uh, frequently with this job and we recertify ourselves every single year. Um, it's a chance for us not just to get that recertification, but also to really find two things in a real world scenario. So we talk about it as a crew. Uh, we all know the ratio of compressions to breast. We can all do it, but it's a chance for us to really sort of fine tune the little things uh, to make sure that we're really providing the best possible care when somebody goes into cardiac arrest. So my first priority on the accident is going to be scene safety. So we're blocking one lane here. I'm going to set some cones out just to make sure people see that we've got several cars, or that we've got a car down past PD. Um, and so just watch your back. It's the most dangerous part of our job today. As you can see is we're going to provide blocking with the fire engine. Fire engine is always going to be your first line of defense. It's the heaviest piece of equipment that we have. So we want to make sure that everybody who's working on the accident scene is going to be in front of the fire engine. We call that shadowing. This is a really simple situation. It's just one lane involved. It gets a little more complex and a lot more dangerous when we're out on the interstate later today. And uh, there's a little more more nuance as to how you want to position the engine and how you want to set up the seat. But it's really important to set yourself up correctly at the beginning because once you set that fire engine, you don't really want to be moving it around on the, uh, on the accident. So after that point, uh, make sure that, again, additional safety items. I go make sure that all the uh, vehicles have their parking brakes set, they're all turned off. Um, and at that point, I can then go check in either with my firefighters or with, uh, with the lieutenant to see if there's any way I can be of, of, uh, of support. So we just have one patient. It looks like I don't even know that they'll be transported. So uh, right now, I'm just shuttling bags back to the engine. Uh, if we had multiple patients, I could go help provide patient care. If we had a critical patient, obviously, we'd jump right in and start working with the patient care at that point. She's trying to aid it today. She took a deep breath, blew out her candles, and fell over. Yes. Well, real quick, just to review, try to arrange the bags accordingly. So that, because this is likely going to be down here with the I.O., that's going to be on the chest. That's our airway bag. So. All right, Corey, you got a pulse? Grandma, uh, Grandma, Hey, hey, you okay, okay? No pulse, no response. Are you with us, Rob? Nope. No, you're not with us? Okay. All right. All right, good compression. I'm going down. Two inches. All right. And what, what, what do we make sure we do? Uh, make sure you're letting the chest recoil. Well, chest recoil. Yeah. Yeah. So the eye goes in. All We're right. drilling an IO right now. So we have an advanced airway with our compression to the breath recoil. Uh, continuous 30 compressions. Uh, breaths every five, six seconds. Okay. What rate of compression do you want? Uh, 100 to 120. 100 to 120. All right. With the engineers, bunk at night. So we'll go ahead and make up our bed. Running the interstate is one of the most dangerous things that we do in this job. In case in point, about three years ago, in April 2019, our old fire engine was responding to a call out on Interstate 20. It was in the middle of the night. Um, a shift was out there on the call and provided blocking like we had talked about appropriately to protect the crews on the scene. And they were hit full speed by a vehicle that has subsequently exploded, caught the car and the fire engine on fire. The engine burnt up. The crew actually very heroically was able to provide uh, advanced life support to, uh, to the uh, patient who was in the vehicle. Um, but it was case in point, it's, it's a very dangerous job. So we've got pieces of the old fire engine uh, that we had 
turn it through a memorial and you have that, the pump panel and other pieces kind of uh, displayed around the station as a reminder not just of the engine uh, to honor the uh, honor the piece of apparatus but also to remind us that uh, we've got to stay vigilant with what we're doing especially when we're on the interstate. So yeah, this is uh, south side of Cobb County. We've got Station 9, old Station 9. Station 9 is right here on Factory Shoals. We're just past the overpass for I-20. I mean, you can literally hear the interstate just, just down there. Um, we've got, it encompasses what, what used to be Six Flags Drive. It's now Riverside Parkway, which takes you by Six Flags over Georgia. So we've got that in our territory. South of the interstate, it's mostly all industrial complexes, and we have one uh, trailer home park here. All along Riverside, most of the rest of our territory is apartment complexes, uh, two, three, four story apartments. Um, and then bordered by Station One, which on this map, this is old Station One. New Station One is just down the road a little bit here. They basically have all of Mapleton. And you've got Station 27 is down here off Fetters Memorial. They're the ones who came over today for CPR training. They have East Mapleton over here. So 27, 1, and 9 effectively encompass the south side, the, uh, the trio. engine on scene, we've got to make sure that we get the hose, water to the hose. On board we've got 750 gallons of water that's going to run out in about five minutes. So if we can't get that fire out in five minutes, we've got to make sure we get what we call a permanent water supply. So my job, once I get those guys line flowing, I've then got to go ahead and get a permanent water supply. Now sometimes it's as easy as a, a hydrant being in the front yard. In which case, I just grab one of what I call my squirrel tails. It's a 50 foot section of hose. Hook it straight up to my engine and it's a piece of cake. At that point, we can tap into the water supply underneath the, under the ground, bring that water into our engine, and then we've got water for as long as we need for that operation. Oftentimes, though, that hydrant's not in the front yard, and it becomes a little bit more complex, and I've got to coordinate with my next new engine to see if they can lay lines for me. engine through multiple different hoses because we're connected to the main water source. So this is obviously a very simple operation. If we're on a warehouse fire or a big apartment fire, a lot of times we can have multiple lines going. And what I've got to do is not just know how to flow each line, but be able to tactfully open that line without disrupting the water flow from somebody else's water hose. And that's where some of the knowledge and skills and practice comes in with being a driver. So it's a, it's a really cool role. If you enjoy thinking and you enjoy math, this is absolutely the best job in the fire department. citizen who fell down and needed some help getting up. There's going to be no transport or anything like that. So that's part of our job too, just public service, just helping, helping people out.
So one of the things that we'll do when we come out here for medical calls is we'll take a look at the apartments and we'll just kind of spitball different fire scenarios with the crew. So we've had several fires at these complex, at, at the apartment complex here before. And so we're just kind of looking at the looking at the apartment. The windows up here pose some special challenges in terms of rescue. So that's something we were out at this very building just last shift and had a conversation about how we might get a ladder up to some of these windows. Just something that's always in the back of our mind, even if we're here for, for an EMS call, we're firefighters first. So we're always thinking about what, what we're gonna do if these buildings catch on fire. The driver is like a lineman to a football team. Um, it's not the flashiest position. It's not, uh, it's, it's not up front and center. You're not the one on the nozzle generally fighting the fire. You're not the one making the command decisions with the lieutenant's helmet on. Um, but the, the functions of a driver are absolutely essential to allowing everybody else on the crew to fulfill their mission. And so as a driver, um, everything from a fire, whether you're pumping, getting water supply, you're setting them up for success. Um, the way you position the apparatus for safety, um, the way uh, your knowledge of the territory, being able to get your crew safely and efficiently to the call. I think Cobb County is a great fire department because there's a whole lot to offer here. So in terms of territory, it's a very diverse county. I mean, you have in our territory, we have everything just in our first run from apartments. Uh, we have two-story, single-story homes. We have large warehouses. We have interstate. Um, you go to a different, different part of the county and you have high-rise buildings up to 30 stories tall. Um, you've got Braves Baseball Stadium and the Battery. You go further north, you've got college campus Campuses. You've got Kennesaw State University. Um, you've got uh, East Cobb, which is more of a residential uh, territory. You've got North and West Cobb, which you'll have farms in, in a, uh, kind of more of a rural territory. You've got suburban landscape, urban landscape. Uh, it's, it's really whatever you desire in firefighting, you can probably find that territory here in Cobb County. The other aspect is, is Cobb really does set us up for success. We have a very, very nice fire engine. Um, and I'm, I'm very blessed having to have been around the country visiting other firehouses, talking with firefighters from other fire departments, I realize that I'm, I'm very fortunate to drive the, the caliber of fire engine that, that I have. And that's it's the case with every station here. Um, our equipment, they really take good care of us and give us the top line equipment. Um, on top of that, the culture, I think, is really what puts it over the top. That We talked uh, earlier about training and how important that is here at Station 9. That's not unique to Station 9, that's Cobb County. Um, we're very passionate about training. Training, um, not just on the firefighting front, but we train in terms of hazardous materials. We train in terms of EMS as well, um, and we're very passionate about being being the best and the best that we can be at our job.